Hey guys, it's Lewis here from ndxtesting.com and in today's video we're going to speak about obstructive sleep apnea. Now, the reason I think this is really, really important because it's if you breathe and if you sleep, you have to know the, the implications of what can happen to you if you don't breathe properly or if you don't sleep properly. Now, in one of my uh, previous videos, I did mention that if you breathe properly, and if you sleep properly, it can, it can transform all your, if your life. If you don't, then it can, really, it can really get you sick. There could be a lot of uh, implications when it comes to uh, medical conditions that can happen to you if you don't breathe and if you don't sleep properly. In fact, that is the most important thing. And it's not diet and, and exercise. In fact, you could diet all you want and you can exercise all you want. You can have the, the best nutrition and you could do numerous things in your life, but if you don't sleep, and if you don't breathe properly, then you have nothing. And I mentioned that in one of my previous videos. So anyway, so what is obstructive, obstructive sleep apnea? Well, it's when your airways on your throat, on the bottom uh, jaw, are, are compromised. And what happens is, is that when you sleep at night, your airways collapse. Usually it happens when people sleep on their back with their mouth open. That's why it's extremely important that you never sleep on your back. You sleep on the side with an elevated uh, pillow. You close your mouth. You never breathe through your mouth to avoid this thing. So let me tell you what, uh, what happened to me, uh, what, how I discovered that I had uh, sleep apnea. And uh, that's why I know a little bit about this, uh, this condition. It was back in, in, in 2007 when I first noticed something odd in my sleep. Now what happens when you have obstructive sleep apnea? What are the symptoms? What happens when you sleep? What you wake up in suddenly. You wake up in, in panic mode. And I will wake up in panic mode, like pretty much just shaking my head, gasping for air, like, like out of breath. I didn't know why that was happening, but it first happened in 2007. And I noticed too, right, right around the same time, my blood, my blood pressure uh, went up. It was coincidentally that I, I don't know where I was or where I went. I think I, maybe I was working. One of the physical therapists just took my blood pressure because they were just taking blood pressure and it was high. I think it was like 170 over something. I was a young kid. I was like maybe 30 something years old, my blood pressure. And I just kind of dismissed it. I was like, well, what would he be high? It didn't, didn't make any sense. but. Obviously now I know that one of the symptoms of, of obstructive sleep apnea when you have sleep apnea is high blood pressure. In other words, anxiety. But anyway, shortly after that, I remember it must have been like maybe 2000. Yeah, it was later on 2007. I don't know specifically when. Uh, I caught a little bit of anxiety. I didn't know it was anxiety then. I know it now because now I can relate to it. And I wasn't, I was feeling weird and I wasn't feeling, uh, I wasn't feeling a hundred percent. I was feeling anxious. I was feeling nervous. I didn't know why I felt that way, but obviously I was younger and it didn't stay for long. It went away like in about three weeks. I remember walking a lot, doing some exercises and, and it went away. Okay. But the episodes of, of waking up suddenly in, in panic mode did not, it didn't happen often. It will happen perhaps. I don't know, a couple of times, a few times a year. And then it started getting, started getting worse. It started getting worse where uh, I caught anxiety and I caught high blood pressure. But anyway, I'm not gonna get into so much of what was happening to me, okay? I just want to let you guys know the meaning of obstructive sleep apnea. It, it, it causes anxiety, it causes uh, high blood pressure, and it, it, it's affecting I don't know, it says about 30 million people, but you know, it's more than that because, I mean, I went to the doctor with, with some of these symptoms and they dismissed it. They just, they, they didn't focus on, on the reason why I had anxiety or why I had high blood pressure. They just focused on, on treating the symptoms. They didn't, they didn't focus on, on, on the cause, like what was causing it. They, could, they didn't have an answer. I believe that there had to be a reason why I felt anxious. There had to be a reason why my heart rate was up. There has to be a reason why my, my my blood pressure was high, but they couldn't they couldn't find they couldn't find a reason. 
And it was later on that I was able to self-diagnose myself, but it took me two years and a half of, of suffering from high blood pressure, suffering from waking up in, in, in panic mode. And, and one of the things that I was doing, I was sleeping with my mouth open with a flat pillow. I was breathing through my mouth. In one of the videos, one of my previous videos, if this is a, if you're watching this video for the very first time, then you need to go back to those videos and, and see that mouth breathing, it's really, really bad. Mouth breathing leads to sleep apnea. Sleep apnea then in turn causes high blood pressure and uh, anxiety, fast heart rate can lead to diabetes. It, it can affect you. But something that I also wanted to mention, okay, this is extremely important. So when I first spoke to an acupuncturist, you know, since I'm in the medical field, I, I work with a lot of different medical professionals and I told him that I had sleep apnea. He was like, that's unlikely because usually sleep apnea affects those that are overweight. Now, when we are chronically, well, I wouldn't say chronically overweight, but overweight. So I'm 5'9 and I weigh 175 pounds at the most. My low weighs like 171, my high weighs 175. I, I always fluctuate between, between four or five pounds. So, but if I was like 300 pounds, it's not chronically overweight, but it's overweight. Or well, 250 pounds, you better believe that I'm going to have a lot of fatty tissue on my throat. And that's no good. That's why if you do research on sleep apnea, you're going to read that it affects a lot of people that are overweight. And one of the first things they tell you is to lose weight. But it is missed that it also affects people they have a bad structure when it comes to their lower jaw and upper jaw. Now what happens is, is that when you have a, an overbite, but when you have a bad overbite, what happens? That means that your lower jaw, okay, your chin, it's all the way back. So what happens when your chin's all the way back? We mouth breathe, it just kind of just messes up the shape of your face. So when you have a, a receding jawline, what happens? It compromises the airways. So all you need to do, and then you also have a narrow uh, jaw. So that you have that, that means your, your airways are, are, are narrow. So all you need to do at that particular point is just seek an orthodontic consultation, and then they will fix your bite. Because if this is the bottom of your bite and this is the top and it goes over and the back and, and, and the, the lower part of the, of the jawline is back, it's going to affect you here. So when you sleep, you're going to have a narrow pathway. Now, let me just tell you, just yesterday I was at work and one of the young girls uh, was complaining that she has anxiety and she has, she's been having anxiety for a very long time. Young girl, she's probably like 25 years old, slim. She's about five feet tall, no more than 110 pounds. But I have noticed before that she does have a really bad overbite. And then she has a lot, it's almost like this bottom here is swollen. And I could just tell just by looking at her that she, her airways are compromised. So when she said that she had anxiety, and she addressed a couple of questions to me, and I did ask her, "Do you um, how do you sleep?" That's a lot of key questions that a lot of physicians don't ask. How do you sleep? Because a lot of disease comes from sleeping and breathing. They didn't ask me that, especially when I'm telling them that I'm waking up in panic mode. They couldn't they couldn't piece it together. Mind boggling. But anyway. I asked the young girl, how do you sleep? Not good. She suffers from insomnia. Insomnia is also a side effect of side effect of sleep apnea. She wakes up in panic mode, not knowing where she's at. And I'm like, well, I can relate to it. Sometimes in, in my peak of sleep apnea, I will, I will wake up in panic mode, shaking my head because I figure, I'm thinking, if I don't shake myself out of this, I'm, I'm dying. I just felt that I was just going. And then I will stumble sometimes into the kitchen to grab, to, to drink water, catching my breath, gasping for air. I'm like, what the heck is going on? And when I will explain this to the doctors, they're like, they couldn't, they couldn't say that it was sleep apnea. It's just unbelievable. It took me two years and a half. I, I saw three different doctors and they couldn't, they couldn't, they couldn't put it together. Even when I went into the hospital, I mentioned one of my videos that I, I ended up going 
I call it a panic attack. I woke up and I woke up on a serious panic attack. Like someone just slapped me in the face. I go to the I go into the hospital, and I'm telling the most elite medical professionals in the hospital, no, they, nothing. Why am I waking up in panic more? Like what's going on? They didn't know. Anyway, I was able to to figure it out. But anyway, so this video is just to draw attention that if this is happening to you, if you waking up, if you are waking up in panic mode while you sleep, if you wake up gasping for air, if you wake up choking, if you wake up suddenly not knowing maybe where you are or or uh, just gasping for air, needing more air, uh, if you're snoring too loud then you can have sleep apnea and if you have sleep apnea then it can lead to a lot of other implications insomnia weight gain or fast heart rate uh, uh, high blood pressure then later on in life it can lead to diabetes so you really need to address that and uh, a lot of physicians sometimes when you go with high blood pressure and anxiety their magic word is you have a genetic disposition now if, if you have anxiety, high blood pressure, or diabetes at a young age, then it's a de genetic disposition. But if you never had anxiety, or you never had, like myself, if you never had anxiety, never had high blood pressure, and all of a sudden I, I go into the doctor's office at 47 years old with these symptoms, it's not a genetic disposition. I don't really care what my mother has or what my father has. My, they have nothing to do with me. There has to be a root cause as far as why am I having these symptoms now sometimes you could have you could be predisposed genetically but it doesn't mean that is your destiny so you need to do your own research it's really important that you know about obstructive sleep apnea it's really important that you know about breathing uh, properly and one of my uh, one of my next videos I'm going to tell you what I do now to treat my sleep apnea I don't have a CPAP machine sometimes you need to be really careful with those things because those things sometimes they have recalls and you can catch an infection. And 90%, I could even say 95% of the people that wear a CPAC don't need it. I know a lot of people that have a CPAC machine and I look at them like, they don't need it. Because at first they were telling me I needed a CPAC machine. Not documented, but I was like, wow, sleep apnea, I need a CPAC machine. You just have to know what, how to sleep, and you have this little devices, these treatments, a lot of things that I do that will take care of my sleep apnea. And obviously the last thing that I'm going to do is seek an orthodontic consultation, see if I can fix my bite, make it the way it's supposed to be. And if that happens, then I can open up airways. Uh, that will definitely go away, but there's reasons why I can't, I can't do that uh, now. But I will give you, I'll be, keep you guys updated as far as the way I'm dealing with uh, sleep apnea, but I sleep well now. I don't have any anxiety whatsoever. My blood pressure is, is, is well. I feel 100% uh, full of energy, and uh, I want you guys also to be able to sleep well, because if you sleep well, you breathe well, you're going to live a long, prosperous life. Anyway, guys, so this is about it for this video. If you find this video a little helpful, then you can uh, refer this to your friends. I'll let, you, let your friends know about uh, obstructive sleep apnea you know you can subscribe we're going to make a lot of different videos remember this channel it's about providing providing medical care solutions and giving you guys diagnostic uh, digitized information so you can be healthy i hope that i was able to uh, help remember this is this is something that i think all 7.7 .7 billion people in this planet should know because if you breathe and if you sleep you have to know the implications of what can happen to you if you don't sleep properly. And understanding the, the structure of your face. Understanding if you have a bad overbite. Understanding that an orthodontist can fix your bite. Understanding all the treatments of sleep apnea. Even if you are uh, overweight, you, don't, you do not have to be uh, a slave to these CPAC machines because it's uncomfortable sometimes to sleep with the machines. But listen, some people do need it. And, and, and but the majority of people do not anyway hope everything is well and i'll see you in the next video